the timer that comes with the um, with iOS, the standard timer, looks like this. This is it's, it's kind of cool. It does the job. I don't know who, who uses the timer in the clock app. Everyone probably yes, lots of people because it's free. It's built in. Um, it's good. It's good. I, I use it too. The issue I have with this is the uh, the actual the date picker, the time picker, is um, up the top of the screen. Which if you've got the uh, iPhone 6 Plus or 6S Plus, it's like two kilometers north of where your hand normally is. Um, that's not that great, and I'm also not necessarily a fan of, of this guy. It, it's all right, it does the job, but I think we can do better. Uh oh. And we've got plenty of time, so we can do like, <laughs> we can do cu custom, custom widgets, right? <laughs> oh, so this is the other thing that the designers say all the time. They want to build everything custom. The stock UI is not good enough. Everything Apple does is not good enough. I just think they want this for their dribble, Mark. This is, this is what That's I... That's what I want it for. Well, you said it was for my portfolio, <laughs> right? That's the whole pitch here. Uh, so, uh, I usually start when I'm working on concepts, start by opening Illustrator. Everyone has different techniques. You can use paper, you can use whatever you want, you can use sketch. Um, this is a good way of just scribbling stuff out, I find. So, if we just start here and say something like that. I should say why Mark doing this is that if Mark can't get this right, then I don't think any designer can. This is like the Vesper of, uh, of apps. What, what do you mean? <laughs> no, co no comment. No comment. <laughs> so uh, I guess if you think about it, Mark, what does our timer need? It needs some kind of time display. I, I like that you put it in has there. To have the, yeah. So, so another, another technique I use when I'm trying to work out UI, you may not know the layout, but if you can work out what is um, a nice representation of each bit that you definitely know you need, we definitely know we need to show some time. We can't just show sand falling through an hourglass. Oh, it would be around, good. It would be better, but... <laughs> Because you're paying me those zero dollars, um, I have to do this. I have to put okay. the time That's in. That's the other thing you learn about designers. They'll be very resentful every time you knock back one of their <laughs> ideas. And you won't stop hearing about it, believe you me. And we also wanted the interaction to be down the bottom of the screen as possible, if possible. So maybe yep. oh. what I was thinking is we could have some, some slider thing that could um, actually extend out beyond the screen. And you could kind of slide it left and right, maybe, as to control oh. the time. Um, it's a little bit better than the hourglass. Yeah, yeah, a little bit better. And we could possibly have maybe some buttons that would be um, maybe presets. I, I hear that 12 minutes is a good time for cooking eggs. Well, you, you heard this, you know this for I sure. I heard this, I heard this. I did some prep, jeez. Because, Mark, I'm going to check up on you. I did bring the Google with me. I'm sorry, oh, no. we're at an iOS conference, oh, I know. No. Oh. So I'm going to try this. How long does it take to boil an egg? Uh oh. Well, you can see. According to taste, simmer the eggs for four minutes for soft boiled Ooh. eggs. All right. For semi firm yolks and hard whites, simmer for five minutes. For, for hard boiled five. eggs, simmer for eight minutes. For eight minutes? All right. So, All right, okay. this is the other thing you find about designers is they'll generally try and put in times that look really good. You know, one looks good, because <laughs> they want symmetry. It's all about the symmetry. But you have to do some research. So you're like, no, Mark, 4, 8, and 12 minutes so are that, actually the, the so standard that, units. 4, 8, and 12. 4, 8, and 12? Pretty sure. If it wasn't, it doesn't matter. Like, we're past All right, we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is not as symmetrical. You notice there'll be some kickback from, from Mark here, because he sees that the 12 is not quite as pretty as the 15. No, no, it's fine. No, it's all right. All right. It. You're the client. You're paying. <laughs> um, so given uh, that we have to be quite quick here, um, how do you like the design? <laughs> it's not bad. What do you guys think? Huh? Ship it. I like it. <laughs> All right, Mark. Is there a button to export to code in here somewhere? Uh, not yet, not yet. All so right. an another thing I do is um, I very frequently use templates for everything just to, just to speed up the process. So I have another. Um, we're going to start working on an iPhone, iPhone 4 design, um, mostly because they still exist and people still use them. Anyone here got an iPhone 4? Oh, one. Just one? Yeah, oh, cool. Respect, mad awesome. respect. <laughs> Old school. Um, so we'll put our slider in, and I'm just guessing these are values clearly. <laughs> 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 Might put it down here somewhere, and throw some buttons in. So is this fairly typical, Mark? You just go straight to, is this Photoshop? Yeah, this is Photoshop. Okay, and you just start laying stuff out. Yep. Hey, that's not right. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. We, I mean, obviously everyone works differently and everyone can work differently, but we, um, uh, we typically mock up things in a pixel perfect fashion in, in Photoshop. Other people uh, use Illustrator Sketch, whatever. You're so. designing at 1x, is that right? That's a Mark Edwards thing? Or? 
Yes, so the resolution we're using here, um, even though I said iPhone 4 size, as in aspect ratio, um, we're, we're actually working at the, the 1X, the original iPhone resolution. And the reason for that is because it maps perfectly to iOS points, which is exactly what you're going to need in the code. Okay. Um, it, oh. looks, it looks low res, so some people don't like working this way because you don't see the high fidelity thing, but it solves so many issues. It means um, your icons are going to look great at 1X, 2X and 3X when they get scaled and there's a whole bunch of other, other benefits. So it makes life easy, even though uh, it is obviously, it's a, it's a low-risk preview. If we zoom in here, you can see um, up here that, you know, it's oh, old school. Jagged pixels, old school. So that's so, jagged. Yep. All right. So we'll throw in. This is the bit where you go. Go, Mark, go. You've obviously done this before. How much time do we have? <laughs> we are rapidly running out of time. So this is, this is how the process normally goes, right? You, you interact with some kind of designer, you either contract out to them, or in the case of our company, um, you suck a one in to come work for you full time, because they're cheaper that way. I don't know if you know, full time salaries are way cheaper than contracting salaries. And a good designer can actually demand a good salary, so you need to grab them early. So out of university, out of TAFE, where, wherever these, <laughs> these designer types come from, if you can get them before they go to like an Apple or a Google, you can get them super cheap. That's, that's my advice to anyone starting a company. Mark Edwards, for example, you've got no hope in getting him. The only way you're going to get him is you're like, oh, we need a keynote presenter, Mark. And Mark, for some reason, he's, he's into the keynote, so he'll be there for that. So you can see he's kind of laying out the elements here. I'm sure he's thinking about where to put them. The buttons are centered. Exactly centered. where to put them. Timers in the middle. Oh, do we think about colors at this point, Mark, or does uh, that come later? We, we do, because we don't have long. <laughs> So at this point, normally you and your designer would argue about what is the best colour? You know, what does yellow represent to a person? And yellow represents the the aesthetic appeal of the egg, I feel. And that's that's why there's a yellow button, I assume, Mark, because you want to you want to capture the essence of an egg. And there is yellow in an egg, is there not? There is. There is. Orange, maybe? I don't know what the orange is in there for. I guess guess we're about to find out. Because it's it's good. We can change it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and there is another important requirement, which I told Mark, I cheated, I told him before the conference, is that I want my egg timer to be usable at night. Because I cook all of my eggs at night. I don't, people who eat eggs during the day, disgusting. You, and <laughs> it is, I'm sorry. I don't want to judge you. I'm not here to judge you, but it is disgusting. Um, so I needed a dark theme. And dark themes are all the rage. I don't know if you've noticed. iOS has been very kind of bright white colours, tiny little fonts that, that no one can read. And it's slowly progressing towards like fatter fonts and, and darker themes. So I made sure that you know, Mark was all over that. I wanted something that worked in, in the dark. Very important. So how are we doing, Mark? Uh, we're going pretty well. I just need to put some little things Ooh. down here. Is this, this is some kind of ruler? Yes, it is a kind of ruler. Because we, we need a slider for the time, right? OK, yeah. So, <laughs> right? So, uh, <laughs> At this point, I'm going to save myself some time, right? I'm going to go into the Xcode, and you're not going to be able to see this. This is all magic smoke and mirrors. I'm going to say file, new project. Very important. That's how all Xcode projects start. I'm stuck on this screen now. It's like, oh, master detail application, page-based application. I'm going to go for single view application, Mark, because I'm guessing our thing's only going to have a single view, yeah? I, th I think so. I think it's, that's all we have time for, so that, would, that would be good. We need a name. That, I don't know if you know, the important thing in app development is you've got to print T-shirts. Um, business cards, socks. Socks are insanely important. If you don't have socks, I don't know how you're launching a product. Um, but in order to do that, you need a good name. So it's an egg timer. Uh, we want it to be pretty precise, maybe like exact. It has to be precise, because otherwise your eggs are going to be overcooked. Exactly. And no one likes overcooked eggs. I, I, don't, know, I don't even know what happens when you overcook an egg, because my timers have always been so precise. Can, can anyone think of a fitting egg pun? I'm egg, going egg perfect. Egg perf I'm going with Exacto, Mark. Oh, that's good. Because <laughs> it's got to be Exact. So we're going to call our project Exacto. Um, we're modern developers, so only Philistines use Objective C. We're going for Swift, obviously. Um, only a fool would try and develop a universal app that runs on iPad and iPhone up here at the lectern. So we're going to go iPhone only. Very important. We're not going to tick the core data box because that's a little bit evil. May as well. Oh no! You've, you've shown them what I'm doing now. Unit testing, sorry Stu, I saw you walk in, no unit testing, forget that. <laughs> UI test, I don't even know what those are to be honest, we're just going to untick that. <laughs> Alright, and now it wants us to put it somewhere. And I'm like, as, to, as a developer, I know I should be storing stuff in uh, a Git repository. Oh look, live version. Oh, I've accidentally dumped it in the wrong folder. There you go, this happens on stage. It needs a version number, 1.0 seems like a good one. This is build one. Code signing. I'm, I'm not insane enough to do anything with that box there. I'm, I'm definitely not pressing it. So, yeah, the developers know. Uh, for those that don't know, 
when you press this button, all sorts of magical weirdness happens, and your thing is filled with signing profiles and provisioning things, and basically it will never run again, is how this works. <laughs> well, I've launched, but where the hell am I? It's all right, we can come back here for a sec. So we're getting a bit closer on the, on the mock-up. Um, one thing we, we don't have is the ruler down the bottom kind of doesn't really indicate where you are at the current time. So we can throw in a little arrowy thing down the bottom. Seems good. Is that a technical term? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it could be. Oh, I know what I did. I put this, see? I put it into the wrong folder. Well done, Russell. I think we're done. I think we have a uh, perfect pixel perfect mock up. Yeah. Don't look at it too closely. Um, now that we've done that, I can, I can save out a, a mock up for, for Russell so he knows exactly what to build. Ah, um, so this cannot be any different to the mock up because that's how it works. <laughs> this is the other thing you find about designers. They're, they're very precious about those pixels. Like, um, I've, I've actually worked with Mark in the past in the past a few times. Um, huge mistake, by the way. Don't ever work directly with a designer. Try and be the boss of the project if you can. Because he does this thing where he'll send you um, essentially an image diff. So there'll be your OK like design, and there'll be his design behind it. And how do you do that? It's like an opacity All thing? Right. You actually blend between the just, two? Let me just do some magic. I'll see if I can find one really quickly. Ah, uh, it's all right. So this is, this is our project as it currently stands. It is, it is a, a thing of beauty. So I don't know how we're going to take this to a working product, but we'll try, Mark. All right, go back here. So we're ready to export some as assets. I've um, exported a mock-up for, for Russell to have a look at. And now um, there's different ways to do this, again, depending on your uh, chosen poison as a designer. Um, for me, I like using uh, Photoshop and slices. There's a slice feature to export bits and pieces. Um, we don't need too many bits with this app. We just need the, just need the little arrow thing down the bottom. Which is here. Oh, naming it. I like it. Yeah, I am. Very look, look, important. Look, naming it. I may have been paying out Mark about his group name before, because when you duplicate stuff in Photoshop, you get group one, group two, group twenty hundred and sixteen. Yeah, well, it may have been done in a hurry. So. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently that's bad practice, I'm told, because if you have another designer come across your project, the last thing they want to drill down is through like three hundred layers of things that say group one, group two, you know, group three hundred and sixteen. So I like that you've named your layers, Mark. Very Great. nice. Now, how many minutes do we want this um, slider to cover? Do you have a... Well, the Google said 12, but I think we can't go to 11 because 12 is higher than 11. We should go to 20. That sounds, that sounds good. Yeah, that makes sense. What if you're cooking an ostrich egg? Oh, what if you're cooking an ostrich egg? Is it, is it like an African ostrich? Is it like a Swedish ostrich? Is, this it, this is isn't called questions. ostrich expo. True. egg so, timer. You know, it's, maybe, that, maybe that'll be an in-app purchase. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing you want to be careful of is when your designer is giving you assets is that if you're not going to be working with that designer again, like if they're not in-house or whatever, then at the start of the project, which is something I forgot to ask Mark, you just, you just slide this in there. You don't want to be too obvious about it. Be like, can I have your PSD when you're finished? Yeah, you can. Okay. So that's important because then you have the source material. If they only give you the, the PNG files and the assets, then you're stuck with that. It's very hard to, to add things to the end of the ruler or change button colors. I mean, you can do it, but it's not recommended. If you've got the original source material, it's just like having source code. You can go in there and edit it. I'm not saying you want to screw the designer out of the process at the end, but if it's cheaper, you know, <laughs> you, you, you do what you got to do. So now watching Mark work his magic. We might, we kind of know what Mark's building here. We're going to go in here and we are going to use storyboards. I don't normally use storyboards. I'm, I'm a fan of zibs. I don't really know how storyboards work, but this is the default thing that comes with it. So we know we need a label. We're going to drop one on here. Uh, we want it to look kind of like realistic, so we're going to put the time in there. Um, we know the font size has to be bigger, and I'm going to guess Mark used about font size 42 maybe. That's, that's it. Oh wow, there you go, I'm a professional. Uh, we're going to do this for now, and we're like, alright, it's going to sit somewhere in the centre of the screen. Uh, we know we need some buttons, so Mark had four buttons there in the middle. So we're going to have to drop a view in, we go like boom, view. Alright, we need some buttons, so button one. And now we're going to do like some really fancy button duplication. So we know this button has to be one minute. Uh, we know that Mark, being the designer that he is, gave the button a background color. So like, ah, oh, thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. 
Uh, it was somewhere in the yellow spectrum. We'll get the colors from Mark like later. That'll do. Yeah, perfect. And now we need to duplicate this button. So we need four of them. Too easy. One over here, one over here, one over here. We now have four buttons. Quickly check in on Mark. How's he doing? Pretty good. Just nudging stuff around. Oh, he's got to get this pixel perfect. It's very important. Um, the other thing we know is that Mark wants a slider. So there, there are a million ways to build a slider, but the if we know he's exporting a ruler this long and the screen's this long, we're like, cool, we'll use a scroll view that's built into iOS. <coughs> it means we don't have to do like, uh, much mucking around. We chucked it down the bottom. And we assume that Mark's going to be giving us some kind of image. So we grab our image, we chuck it into the scroll view, and we worry about how that scrolls around a bit later. So now if we run this, through the magic of the Xcode, Ta-da! And now you know something interesting. You're like, oh, that's weird. I thought I laid it in the center of the screen. So those of you who are developers know exactly what's going on. Those of you that are designers, uh, we have to use something called auto layout. You've got to lay stuff out. You've got to tell it you want it centered. Otherwise, it does like weird stuff like this to it. And auto layout is one of those things that you hear developers swearing a lot. And generally, this is one of the things we swear at. I'm not going to do it here on stage, I promise. How are we going, Mark? Uh, pretty good, if you want to switch back. Yeah, go for it. All right, so um, I've set up some slices in Photoshop, and I'm just going to name them. So we'll just call this one slider, and we'll call this one arrow. Amazing, very creative names. <laughs> and so as I said, there's lots of different ways to export um, different tools. This is how I do it. So I've, I've set up some slices in Photoshop, and I actually have some actions to um, export to 1x, 2x, and 3x. So if I just click that, magic stuff happens, including um, Hazel runs some, some, some cool stuff to, um, to change the file name. So uh, what I do is I export to a 2x folder and a 3x folder that's in a known location. Hazel renames them and puts them all into the one place. So this is to make up for some Photoshop deficiencies. Does anyone here use Hazel? Oh, yes, there'll be links. We've actually got a, a page that has all links to all the tools and everything we've, we've used. Um, so we now have some, some assets for, for Russell to use. So what I can do is I can uh, copy them into here. I'll just call them, put them in there. And then, here's the part, the fun part of the talk. So I've now got a mock-up and um, as some assets for Russell. And who uses Git? Who loves Git? Yes, some people, lots of people. Awesome, cool. What about designers who use Git? Oh. Wait. Oh. Yeah, that was, that's actually the expected result. Um, Git is amazing. Git is really cool. Again, we've got lots of different links. This is a, a tool called uh, Git Tower. It works with GitHub. Um, if you're a designer, it's definitely worth getting into Git. It, it is beneficial in many, many ways. Um, now, let me just try and do this. Live demo and internet on stage. <laughs> it's almost like someone told us not to do that, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I'm having yeah, some just... like flashbacks here. So Mark's going to put that stuff in gear, and that's really important to version control the stuff because these assets could change over time. It's nice to know when they changed. It's nice to know, especially if you're working with clients and they're like, oh, actually, I preferred the design I did before. It's very easy to go back. Whereas in, I guess in Photoshop, that stuff's a lot harder to do if it's not source control. Yeah, so generally speaking, um, you cannot version control your main design documents because most of the design tools use um, big binary files and they might be like 700 meg and you change one tiny thing. And then when you go back to Git, you have to um, uh, put the, push the entire file back onto the repo. So your developers will hate you if you use um, Photoshop or Sketch documents or Illustrator documents um, with Git, but the actual assets themselves, they can definitely go on there and the mockups can go on there as well, which is exactly what I've done. So I've just the most recent commit put all this stuff onto the, the uh, repo that we have for, yep. for this project. And now Russell, with the magic of the internet, can get them over there. All right, so let's do this. We're going to go into our, wait a sec, to our repository folder. We're going to look in here. We're going to find the design assets. Cool. All right. So you'll see this is the kind of stuff that our designer has provided us. So there's a mock-up. You're like, cool. OK, I know what this is going to look like. Uh, it, there's, well, there's ones for different phones. So you can see uh, the designer is trying to hint at stuff here. So on a squishy phone, like our friend down the back there has, you get a slightly squishier design. That's a technical term. 
And then if you go up, you see, okay, that thing's meant to remain about the center, but everything else looks like it's kind of anchored to the bottom. You're like, cool, I understand that. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that our designer seems to be hinting at some kind of touchdown state here. And that's cool. You can say so someone can know, like, oh, press the button, very important. It, also, as a developer, what you tend to do is ignore that stuff the first time around, because if you can get away with it, then why, why put all this extra work on yourself? <laughs> so we've got our assets folder Thanks. here. That's, that's great. That's, that's how really it works. Nice. Xcode has, of course, locked up briefly. So we know we need some assets. We've got those. We've got an arrow. So all right, let's, uh, pro tip, I'm sure every single person in this room knows this, but if you don't, you can grab those assets. You can drag them directly into your asset catalog. And look, makes a file called arrow. It never used to do that. It used to be a huge pain in the uh, something to do that. Uh, Mark has made us some app icons. This is, this is the fun of working with iOS. You have to try and do a bit of math. So you're like, uh, okay, 29 times 2 is 58. So Should we do the app icon later, or do okay. you want to put it in now? That'll do. Done. So we go back to our storyboard. Suddenly our buttons have gone yellow and big. I don't know, that's weird. It's like someone else was doing that while you weren't watching, Mark. Um, <laughs> so the important thing is Mark wants these things in the center, right? So, all right, let's do it. Auto layout, we want to center horizontally. Uh, we are going to let the width be defined by the things that are inside the container, so we're not going to bother defining like a, a width or a height. But now it needs to know where is it going to sit uh, in the vertical sense. So if we look back at Mark's design, we know that it's gone. So we, we know that it was anchored to the bottom. So we go, OK, we're going to anchor our scroll view to the bottom. Uh, vertical spacing to bottom layout guide. There you go. That's a storyboards thing. Uh, we want to anchor this to either side of the screen. So we go leading and trailing. You can also press this. Uh, Darth Vader looking button down here and actually do it from here. Uh, we'll just do it this way, I don't know, because I like to. So you've got trailing. Uh, it needs to know how big it's going to be. I think, Mark, your asset was? 88, 88 point, points. points. No, I mean in height. For the slider? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 88 points. Oh, sorry. Mark was giving me height. There you go. You've got to listen to your designer. And we, we can lock that in, because we know that's not going to change. We're like, right, the height is 88 points. Um, now we want to anchor our button view to that. Mark's button view was a bit lower, so we're OK, cool. We'll go, yeah, just anchor yourself to this thing. Yeah, wherever, now, wherever you want to stick it. We, we don't know. All right. <laughs> Time is counting down. OK, OK, OK. So this is, this is all really interesting stuff. You can mess around in, in here for ages. Um, it just so happens that there's a weird Xcode project sitting down here where <laughs> we've already anchored all this stuff. And as it, as it turns out, it's very happy with the way we've laid it out. And that's good. This is, this is your user interface done. So what we have is you've got the label, uh, where the time's going to go. Um, you've got the actual buttons that you can press. Mark wants this uh, this thing to be, what is this thing called, a ruler, to be slidey, so that if you slide it to 20, it'll just immediately start. Yep, back we're calling it the slider, the egg slider. The egg slider. Egg slider, yep. It's eggs. Yep. It's like a burger, but it's egg. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do, because let's face it, you can't actually build an app in an hour. I'm sorry, people, this is a lie. <laughs> um, we're going to grab this view from over here in this magic Xcode project we created before, and we're going to dump it straight in here. We're like, ta-da! Ta-da. Ta-da. So we, we're, the only thing we're missing is your ruler assets, Mark, which we can add. So we'll go find those in here. Oh, this is very bad. We should have, just another pro tip, you meant to take Mark's images folder, put it in here, and now you've got permanent access to it. Uh, something in here called a slider. There it is. Drop that in. All right, so now we've got, we've got our rulery thing. If we go back to our storyboard, the ruler's in there. Cool. So now we have essentially a hooked up user interface, but what we don't have is all the code bits for it. So I guess this is what we promised here, yeah? coding live on stage. So we hop over here. There's a view controller. It is completely empty, not pre-canned view controller. Aren't you all impressed? So we need, we need some button actions. When you press those buttons, something has to happen. Uh, now remember, this. nothing about this demo is canned. Ooh. <laughs> oh no, my screen's locked. This is terrible. Fingerprint unlock to the notes app. Uh, where are we, Mark? Oh, that's right. Nothing about this demo is canned, like I said. So we need some actions. We need some IB outlets for our stuff. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh there they are. That's, that's impressive. Am that's amazing. So an IB outlet, for those that don't know, is just a way of hooking up something in the interface uh, file with something in the actual code. So when I tap this button, this function will be executed. So we're going to quickly hook these up. We're like, Argh. and Xcode's like, no, don't want to. All right, so I think we also need our set timer function, which it seems to be complaining about. That's cool, we can do that. Um, 
if you think about it, there are a few different ways to build a timer. And this is an important thing about being a developer is sometimes you have to separate the data model from the visual model. Visually, what's happening is the timer's ticking down. So your first instinct's going to be, ah, OK, I set it to two minutes or whatever, and every second I just decrement one from that. That would kind of work. Um, you run into some problems with the way timers fire. They don't exactly fire every thousand milliseconds or whatever. You probably don't care about the details, but the point is sometimes you have to design things differently at the data layer to the visual layer. And what you essentially, the best way I think to build a timer, we've decided, is you want the end time because that's a precise time. You're like, this is the time the timer's going to end and everything else that happens around it is going to be visual. So we obviously need a, a timer method. If we can get two Ts, boom, we've got a way to set our timer. So we want a variable called end time, which is the time it's going to end. iOS has this uh, useful thing in it. If we just type this in here, whoa, is it some constants for us later? The iOS has this concept of an NS time interval. So there is there is a unit of time built in. It's measured in seconds. It can have like precision lower than that. We should probably use it. It's built into the language. Um, so we call it an end time, and we can say I don't know, it's equal to zero because programmers love zero, and it's it's an NS time interval. So now we have, okay, this is the time that our time is going to end. We have a way to set it down here. The, the thing that we're doing here is, I got this, shortcuts, whoa. Command Alt Zero, there we go. Um, is, again, iOS has the concept of NS date in the foundation classes. Um, the Unix programmers out there and the Java heads will love the fact that we've referenced it from 1970 because there is nothing better in the code than seeing the first of the first 1970 as like some, something's gone wrong. Uh, we've declared it as a let, which is a very bad idea because we have to be able to change it. And so now it's happy. We've got our end time being set. And now we need some way of actually having the timer tick because if you've set the end time and that's it and you wait till you get there, the user's going to be a bit bored. They're not going to see anything. They're going to be like, ah, you know, like this, this is no good at all. And so we have to have a way to, to keep that moving, yeah? And we also have to, how, how do we keep that moving, Mark? That's a very good idea. So we need a, we need a function. Start a function. UI update timer. Cool. So in there, we're going to do something that will visually like update the user interface. And now it should actually let us hook these things up. Oh, Xcode's like, it's not happy at all. It doesn't want to do it. That's, oh, right. that's fine. What's that? You can do that? Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Everybody's learning today. <laughs> Thanks. That is impressive. Did you know you could do that? I did not know you could do that. <laughs> so now if we were to run this, um, it would set the end time. It's like, cool. The problem is we've got, we've got nothing defined for like what on earth happens. So what, what do we want to happen, Mark? Uh, well, maybe it could explode in sand. <laughs> Oh, you know, you know, I, no, 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 I, I, I realise I we don't have time for that. Maybe it's, maybe it's just a sound. A sound? A sound. Oh, oh Mark, Mark, Mark. Do I, I know you haven't provided this design and you should, you should not normally bring other things in that your designer hasn't designed. I've got this, <laughs> which, which could be something we have in the end. It's not a sound, though. I, I do happen to have one of those here. If I play it, no one's going to be able to hear it. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to drop it into our project. So we're going to expand this out. Uh, we're going to drop the sound in. It's called Explosion Mono, so that, that'll keep Mark happy. We'll put it, we want it in there, yep. Yeah. So we, when, it, when it finishes, we want to play a sound. Um, how do you do that on iOS? There's a few different ways. You can use AV Player, you can use the sound libraries. This is a very short sound, so we probably want to use the, the lowest level API that we have. So let's get rid of that. Um, you need to, obviously, you get the file path, not that exciting. You set it up if it hasn't been set up, and you play it. So now when our... Time is finished. We've got a play amazing sound. That's good. I reckon we should maybe flash the time as well. That would be cool. That would be cool. Think about it. If the user has their phone mute, muted, or perhaps you know the, their hearing is not so good, probably not the greatest idea in the world to have just the sound and nothing else. So we want to flash the time, yeah? So the way we do that is I'm really fast at typing. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> You, there are several ways to do animations in iOS. You can do UI view based animations. This one seems more like a, like a core animation type thing because we want it to repeat. So what we're saying there is we want to take the opacity, which is how, you know, whether it's solid or whether it's completely transparent, we're going to take it down to 0 0.1, which is almost sort of transparent. 
500 milliseconds, do you reckon? What's, what's a good duration? Let's Do designers let's have a guide for let's this? That's half a second, that works in, right. in English. Yep. Done. That's good. We want it to repeat forever because we want people to get the idea, like take your egg out of the thing. It's, it's going to die. It's not good. <laughs> um, order reverses just means when the animation gets to the end, it'll start from the beginning, pretty obvious. Um, designers love timing functions. They can't get enough of them. They draw little curves of like, oh, it can go slow, and then it can go fast. Ease in and ease out is always a good one if you're stuck with something else. And then we want to update our label. So we want to say, OK, add the animation into our label. So our label will actually do the flashy thing. Um, some of the other stuff we need to do, we need to be able to format the time on screen. So just showing someone the amount of seconds is probably not the greatest idea in, on Earth. Um, Swift has a lot of formatting functions. It has a new formatting library. Uh, Russell doesn't know how to use it. Russell is a huge fan of NSString, which he learned uh, many years ago. So this is how you format two numbers in, a, in the NSString world, is you, have, you say you want the first one to be uh, one or more digits, you say you want the second one to always be two digits no matter what, so you get one, zero, one if there's, there's only one second remaining. That's important. Um, we need to hook up some of our other stuff, don't we, Mark? Certainly do. So the other thing we've got to do is the scrolly bits. So Mark has said when you flick this, it has to scroll, right? That's very important. So the way you do that in the iOS world is with a scroll view delegate. It's, it's a standard sort of pattern in iOS to say, hey, this thing is, is the delegate for my other thing. That means when something happens in there, it'll trigger actions. So we go back to our view controller and we go, all right, somewhere in here we should define like a, all our UI scroll view delegate stuff. So again, I'm very fast at typing. Whew. Okay, <laughs> so here's the important stuff. We need to know when the users started dragging, obviously. We need to know when the drag is going on, very important. As they're dragging it around, we want to actually figure out what the new time is. So if they drag to 10 minutes, it's got to be at 10 minutes. If they drag at 15, 15. Um, we need to know when they finish dragging. And the important thing here is not when they let go. It's when the thing finishes decelerating and sort of comes to a stop. And then the last thing is we want to handle the case where the user's being a little bit tricky and they're like just moving their finger and then lifting their finger and there's no deceleration whatsoever. So we've got both of those cases handled. All right, Mark, I don't know if you've got any more for me. So we need, we need a variable for telling us if the user's scrolling or not. Um, we need a remaining time level. We'd also need the soundy stuff. So let's quickly hook that up. We're going to go in here. Up one. Oh. Cool. So the thing we're missing is we don't have a... What are you doing? There we go. So we don't have our remaining time level. Very important if you actually want to be able to update something. So we'll drop that in. We'll call it a remaining time label. Um, some people are really against putting the word label on the end of labels and stuff. I think it's, it's not worth in the programming world being too dogmatic. If something's a label and you want to call it a label, feel free to call it a label. If you want to call it just remaining time, feel free. The last thing you want to call it is RT or something like that because when someone comes along and they're like, I don't know what that is, and that's your fault, sort of not theirs. So I think now, Mark, we have, we have all the basic elements. We don't, we don't have a sound to play, which is fine. We can, ah, we need to update the screen time, yeah? That's the last bit we're missing? Yes. Cool. Yes, so. We need to start updating some of these visual elements. And because I can see we're running out of time here, we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to scroll down here. Oh, it's like someone wrote this before. That's pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> we're, we're going to use our fancy Xcode shortcuts. And we're going to be looking for start your update timer. There it is. Oh, I probably could have written that myself. Look at that. So I don't want to bore you too much. We're going to go back into the code. Down here, we need to create one of these. Where did it go? There it is. Oh. Cool. So now we have in, in iOS, you've got the concept of an NS timer. It's, some, it's a really handy class just for doing things that happen on a regular basis. Um, we're going to call a timer did fire method when that happens. Um, it's going to repeat because we want it to tick along, obviously. Um, and we want to store a reference to it so that we can cancel it if we need to. So if the user happens to drag to the end or something like that, that's fine. We need to, we need to cancel it. So let's drop that in here. Cool, we'll make it optional. That's what the question mark means because we, we don't have to have one if we don't want to. Comment these things out for now. Oh. I think now we have almost everything. Oh, we need a way to stop the timer. It's probably important, and this is going to complain. So, uh, getting lost a bit. Here we go. So, let's create one of these. So, the stopping a timer is really simple. There's just one method on it that you can check, and it's just timer.invalidate. And all that means is, hey, like finish up. We can set it to nil because we're old school programmers and we like sort of sending stuff to nil. Very important. 
Um, and the last thing we need is, I'll set that to one for now, is we need this timer did fire method. So every time the timer ticks, it's going to call this method. And this is where we want to do our UI stuff. And again, this is where we're going to skip over to here and be like, hmm, how do we implement this before? If only every project had another project that was already built that you could just copy and paste from. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So we'll comment those things out for now. So we kind of have something that should half work now. We'll see if this compiles here. Yeah? Build succeeded. That's amazing. Are you using Swift 3? <laughs> and Xcode 8? No, we're not we're using not. Swift 3 and Xcode 8. Because those two things together, they like to crash a lot. So we thought we wouldn't subject you to that. Um, all right, so what should happen now? We click one minute. Hey, ticks down. Go. Magical. Um, we slide this ruler. It, it changes. That's pretty impressive. Um, and when it gets to the end, it, it'll obviously it'll play our sound. It'll do the flashy thing. The one bit that we're missing, though, is it looks a little bit weird that that ruler doesn't tick along. You're like, oh, that, that's kind of weird. Like yeah, you've it should got, definitely move. Yeah, because it, it, you've given the user a visual representation of something, and you're kind of breaking that mental model by not having that move. So we can quickly hook that up. We just hit a stop, stop button here. We'll go back to our code. Get rid of the dual views. So the thing that we're missing is, OK, we need some reference to the scroll view so we can actually move it along. Let's do that. Oop. So we go back to our storyboard file. Uh, we expand, oh, not that thing, this thing. And we grab our scroll view, which is down here. And again, we just drop it into our project. So we go to the top, we're like, cool, we need the scroll view. Um, give it some sensible name, I don't know, timer scroll view. It's in our project now, which means that as it's ticking along, we can actually update it. And the way to do that is, and I'll just make this big so you can see. Oh, man, this is really hard to do on stage. You know what? This is a really bad idea, Mark. I'll tell you now. <laughs> Was it like working on a 12-inch screen? No, it's hard. Oh, this is the other thing is normally as a developer, I'm working on a 34-inch screen plugged into like a Mac Pro. This is, this is a little bit different. So the way to do that is we've cheated a little bit. We know that Mark has given us an image where it's 40 pixels or 40 points, if you want to call them, every second. We're like, cool. So how much time is remaining? We times that by the, the amount of pixels per second. And that's what we set the scroll views content offset to. So if we've done that correctly and we hit go, and we highlight this thing. I know there's a lot of copying and pasting, but I'm still impressed that it hasn't failed yet. <laughs> <laughs> and now it will. Yeah. So you can see now that it's ticking along. You're like, that's cool. The thing is actually moving. Um, it's moving quite it's slowly, but you can see it moving. See the. The shimmering of the pixels. No, okay. At this point, we have a working prototype. We finished. We can hand it back to. I know I'm the client, but we hand it back to the designer. And we're like, Mark, what do you think? I think it's pretty awesome. I mean, we could probably do a little bit more auto layout work, but do we need an app icon? We need an app icon. I think the other thing we need, Mark, is see how that time is doing this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's not good enough at all. Um, so how do you fix that? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, so when I say this thing, I mean that the time, see how when it, the one is smaller than the two, is smaller than the zero, so it keeps going in and out, which is visually quite distracting. Yeah, so this is, this is actually a new thing. Um, uh, the old iOS font, Helvetica, um, had monospace numbers. Uh, Apple's new sexy font, um, uh, San Francisco, has proportional width numbers. So we actually we would like, if possible, uh, to have monospace numbers so that our egg timer doesn't jump around a lot, because we'll get bad reviews on the app. I'll tell you what, we'll switch to Mark. He'll start working on the icon. I'll see if I can go to stackoverflow.com, which is where every programmer <laughs> should be going. And we'll, we'll figure out how to monospace the font. Awesome. So let's, let's work on an app icon. Um, again, I'm starting from another template. This is actually a template that um, I built myself and is freely available. Again, we'll have a, a link at the, end of, uh, at the end so you can go and grab it yourself. Um, actually, because I'm a bit of a masochist, I built it for um, every single design tool, so it's Photoshop, Sketch, Illustrator, Affinity Designer, all of them. Um, so this, is, this shows all the, the iOS app icon sizes. You'll notice there's a lot of them. Um, the the grey ones are actually ones that aren't needed, but, but um, everything else is color coded. So the light blue is the 1x size, the purple is the 2x, and the, the red is the 3x. Uh, we also need a, an app icon for the, um, the App Store, which is the large one. So given that we're making an egg timer, um, there is actually a little bit of a cheat 
to shortcut, especially if you want to test an app icon idea. Um, I'm using Smart Objects here for in, in Photoshop, and that will actually provide all the sizes. Um, there are some uh, serious issues with doing this for production, but certainly when you're on stage and you don't have much time, or, or even if you're just trying to work, work something out, um, using Smart Objects is, is fine. Uh, the, the downside is they get bitmap scaled, and I'll show what that looks like in a second. So, we're using yellow as a UI color, so that might work, that might be good. Yeah, like an egg, very important. Yep, like an egg, has to look like an egg. Um, and maybe, in fact, actually I'm not gonna do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do it properly. Oh, why do it, why do it badly? Okay. Is that the 60, no, 76. So is this where you wish Apple had made some kind of vector icon format for iOS? No, no, not at all. No, no, I'm happy with the bitmaps, but I would like it. It would be nice if they kind of related in some kind of way rather than just being all haphazard sizes because that's that makes life really... <laughs> You're not happy with 57.5 point? No. Does it like an icon size? No, no, okay. no I'm, that's weird. I'm not at all. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to start with the, um, again, starting with 1X. This is the original iPhone icon size and go away. So this is 60 by 60 point, and um, given that we, we're making an egg timer, I uh, thought it could be, uh, we don't want that. I thought it could be kind of cute if we um, maybe did a little chicken face. That'd, mm. that'd be kind of like cool, it. yeah. Although, are we reminding our users of like where the eggs come from? Is that, is that a good move? It's like you call it beef, not cow, right? You're putting a chicken on the front. I don't know about this. Um, yeah, okay. we, we only have a certain amount of time, Russell, so <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to take many suggestions, but not that one. So for those of you that have developed apps sort of on your own time, is this the typical sort of process that goes on? Would you, would you describe this as a typical project? Yeah? Tim's nodding his head. He's like, yeah, sure is. Is this what they do at Realm, Tim? <laughs> yeah, so normally at this point there's a lot of backwards and forwards. Like obviously. It's, it's very rare that you'll get behind your designer and just be like, just nudge it up a bit, just nudge it up. Because that would be, that would be really annoying, would it not? And the, the same for design and code. Like, you, you do kind of throw stuff over the fence a little bit, and then there's a little bit of collaboration to be like, oh, you know, we kind of envisioned something different. And that's where the designer would go off and do some tweaking. And the same thing with code. Like, you'd show someone a prototype, and they're like, yeah, that, that's all right, but, you know, I think we can do better. So we obviously only have an hour. There would be normally a lot more sort of back and forth that, that would happen. Although... I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this, Mark. It's a very um, you like it. It's a very dark looking icon. It's all right. We'll give it a little bit more color. <laughs> bit of a bit of a beak in there, and Whee. wow, that's really cool. And this is also where you start to feel jealous. If you're a developer and you watch a designer working, you're like, man, I wish I could draw pixels. I wish I could write code. <laughs> This, this Everything is, is sad. That you read a lot of blog posts about. There's a lot of designers that are like, oh, you know, you've got to learn how to code because that's the complete experience. And there's a lot of coders who are like, oh, you've got to learn how to design. But there's also nothing wrong with just working with someone who's good at their craft and you're good at yours. Like, you don't, you don't need to be good at everything, I don't think. That's a personal opinion, though. If someone here is good at both, that's fine. Good for you. I'm not jealous or anything. I'm envious. All right. Oh. So, yeah, what we're going to do now is magical shortcuts. So I'm just gonna make this, uh, we started at the 60 by 60 point, which is the original iPhone um, icon size. And the cool thing about that is it scales to, because this is an iPhone app, so we care mostly about the, um, the not necessarily the 1X, but we're starting there anyway, because it gives us a perfect 2X and 3X size, so it'll look great on an iPhone 6 Plus screen. I'm actually just going to cheat a little bit. <gasps> Mark Edwards, how could you? And we are going to use, it's good though, because it'll demonstrate something as well. All right. So we're going back to the template, and we'll open the, the smart object. Hey, that's not what I wanted. So I've just moved, I made the icon um, 1024 by 1024, and moved it into this, did I really? Oh, there we go, cool. Moved into the smart object. And the good thing about that is what it now does is in the, the template, we now have all the sizes built. Um, and it's a good example of showing this, this icon here. So this is, 
have a look. Where's our group? There it is. So we have the 60 by 60 size built um, perfectly with, with vector shapes. And these other ones have been created by bitmap scaling. So you can see, even though we built the, the, um, the big version at 1024, when you scale it down, you get a lot of these really nasty scaling artifacts. So if you can, you're definitely better off um, building icons at every single size you need and, and using vector scaling and generated techniques rather than just bitmap scaling or using, I think there's a whole bunch of tools that do it as well. We can give it a big, big image and it'll scale it down for you. That's great, it saves you a whole bunch of time, but it looks terrible, so please don't do that. Um, in, in this case, we are gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't have time. So I'll just turn off the masks, and again, I've got some, some magical exporting pixie dust. Actually, I'll just clear out. The old assets are still there. So again, I've got, um, these are all set up as, as slices in, in Photoshop that, that give you the, the correct size and name. And if I just click export, run some fancy stuff, and we now have all the sizes we need um, for the project. So I can just copy those into the, the actual project, uh, into the images folder, so Russell can, can grab them and I can commit them to Git again, so. Ah, this is where we get to another important point actually, is that um, in the developer world, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of, I don't know if you know, there are a lot of wars about technology and stuff. Mark uses, Mark uses something called Tower, because it's the best. Because it's the best, yeah. That, that, this is the correct way to argue. Um, I use something called <laughs> Source Tree because it's the best. And so you, ha you have a lot of different tools to get the job done. Tabs, spaces, tabs. <laughs> tabs, always tabs. Um, oh, oh! <laughs> we can talk about this later. So, we have an icon. We have an icon, and it's the best icon ever. We're not changing it because we have nine minutes, 23, 22. 21. All right, all right, all right, go, go, go. So Mark, Mark is here, he's suggesting that we're starting to run out of time. So I'm just gonna quickly take Mark's icon. Oh, I've dropped it in there, it's amazing. I've got his arrow as well, which is very important. We were missing that before. Um, we've got his slider asset. It's, it's good to go, I think, Mark. I've also been to stackoverflow.com, just like I promised. And it turns out this is how you monospace a font. I don't know if this is the most efficient way. It's not worth worrying about. The code looks all right. It came from Stack Overflow. It's nice. Um, this is something you can... It had five upvotes. It, it was, it was a top vote of comment, people. Has to be good. Don't knock that. Um, this is what's called a, an extension in Swift. It's kind of like a category in Objective-C, but a little bit different. So what we've done is on the UI font class, we've created a method called monospaced, and that turns our font into monospaced. It's magical. And then all we need to do is we need to say, hey, you know, label, your font is now a monospaced font. So if we run this... We should have an icon. Oh, it's already there. So if I hit two minutes now and we watch it tick, see how the time no longer does, does this business? It's a lot less visually distracting. Um, we've hooked this up now so we can flick it around and that ticks down. If we flick to the end. Oh, I had no idea the sound was hooked up. There you go. And they said it couldn't be done, Mark. They said it couldn't be done. We, we have time left, I think. They were right. They were dead right. Um, the, the reason we finished so fast is because you're not going to be able to learn how to build an app in an hour. That's a, that's a really hard thing to do. You need to watch tutorials and stuff. We hope we've given you some exposure to how the process works. But we have with us a world-class designer, and we have with us a developer, which is all you need, one developer. <laughs> so we thought, rather than us burn through the entire time, it'd be nice to, for people to ask some questions. So if you've got some questions about how the UI side of things work or the code side of things work? Yep. Yes. Uh, so you're basically are throwing stuff over the fence and in the real world there's a lot more back and forth. Uh, you've got the, um, the visual side all up and running in no time and then done with the blank canvas for developing. Um, have you ever, what method have you come up with to minimise that throwaway, the throwing over the fence, the starting again, the, I'm going to look Can I say this? Yeah, go for it. Mark. Great. So the question was, how do you minimise wastage when trying to work out the design and what the app is? Is that that sums it up well? And, and, and also the backers and forwards. You built the app once, and then we have done here. Right. So you're talking about iteration. How do you how do you iterate? How do you minimise the amount of work there? How do you minimise the throwaway? Is there anything you can pass on other than 
I like things you can give the developer. Like, is there some way you can export code or you right, can right? Right. So, some so code? one thing um, I did when we were building this for the first time to check that we could actually do it. Um, although we actually just magically did it this time with no help, right? I did provide a whole bunch of specs for Russell, and this is this is normal. So the the like red lining and and, and more mockups, um, and this is just all the the fonts and and, and colours that we, we'd need to use. Um, another thing I found is it's, it's really great to get everyone involved right at the start, and this is something that a lot of designers aren't necessarily comfortable with, but, it, but it's great to get buy-in for the concept, and um, we personally still use a lot of pixel-perfect mock-ups, and the reason that's okay is because everyone already agrees with the project before we start writing code, so in terms of wastage and backwards and forwards, um, there isn't too much of that. Uh, having said that, we also, um, as you saw, there was sort of automated um, asset exporting. I think that's absolutely vital, and anyone who's sort of hand cutting things out and, and wasting time doing that, um, that that can that can certainly be a, a, a really uh, a, a big issue. So it's it's far better to have automated exporting that way. You can make changes, and and it's really just a matter of if I'm just changing images, um, the developer Russell just has to update the repo. That's it. So that's why again, it's good for designers to have. Um, Control and be actually, you know, learn how to use Git, which isn't isn't that difficult. For yeah. Basic use. I mean, the other thing we do at Shifty Jelly is um, Chris will work a lot in Sketch, and I'll just open his Sketch files and I'll do measurements in there. I can see that's 30 from the corner. I can see this in particular height. I can cut and paste the colours out of there. I I know that's not quite what you're asking, but that that's how we operate. Is that I can get everything from your Sketch file that I need, 